Sweet. So thank you guys for giving me some time, some of your morning today. Um, my name is Nick Tremalio. I'm a BD manager for EasyNock. So that means I'm your point of reference if you have any questions, any concerns, if you want to jump on a quick call and, you know, workshop a deal, see if this is a good idea from one of your clients. That is, that, that's what I'm here for. So Kenny, who's below me on this screen, he's going to be the person who walks you guys through the entire process from deal submission all the way to close deal. So once you have a client that you know you want to get an estimate for, you submit the deal to Easy Knock, you're going to be dealing with, uh, with Kenny. So today, what I'm going to do for you is give some product overviews, talk about our movability program. We are going to talk about use cases, buy box criteria. Um, we have an example deal, and then obviously questions uh, from you guys. So let's keep this really conversational. I, I don't think the group is too big today. So if you have any questions or concerns, I, you know, moving too quickly, I, I didn't really cover something completely. Don't uh, don't worry about it. Uh, feel free to interrupt me, throw a question into the chat, but uh, I want to make sure that. I'm giving you guys the information that you're looking for. That, that's the whole goal of, of today's presentation. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start off with is EasyNox Buy Box. This should give you a good idea of who we're able to help out and what that client you know, customer profile looks like. So the first thing we're gonna look at when we're assessing these deals is gonna be home value. We can work with homes between 100,000 and 2 million. So pretty big range there. I'd say the majority of the houses we transact on fall between 200 and 600,000, but we can go up to that 2 million number. It's not an issue for us. Now, the other thing that we're gonna look at, which is arguably the most important factor here is gonna be LTV. LTV is so important because it's, it's really what drives how much equity or how much money the client gets up front. The more equity they have in the house, the more money you get. And that's because we're really at our basis for converting equity into cash for the client. So you'll kind of get a better understanding of how this all works out once we, once we do the example deal and you see all of the numbers. But just keep in mind, more equity, more money up front. Now, when it comes to the client-specific requirements, we don't have any. So that's a really, really great way that we kind of separate ourselves from our competitors is that... We don't have a credit score requirement. We don't have a DTI or income requirement. We are extremely flexible with who we can work with. So that means, you know, people who are unemployed, recently lost their job, maybe self-employed people who they could, you know, make plenty of money, but it comes in at different times of the month. Um, also people on benefits. It's, it's not an issue for us. We're extremely flexible with, with the, the client uh, profile. Okay, so this goes over, you know, what transitioning between two homes looks like right now. So obviously the market is insanely hot and really clients without cash are getting left behind. They're not able to compete. You need cash for bidding wars, appraisal guarantees, uh, you know, all cash offers, big down payments. If you don't have that cash, it's very, very difficult to compete in a hot market like we're seeing today. And so you can sell the current house, you know, quickly, but purchasing the next is going to be very contentious due to the demand in the market. So we see this as extremely inefficient. We want to be able to come in and clean up the mess that's created by this hot market with our movability program. That's, that's the goal of this program. So before we jump into that, let me kind of give you a high level overview of how we're helping our agents. Right, we're providing a seamless bridge solution for your clients to help bridge the gap from one house to the next, make it a lot, uh, lot easier for all parties involved. We're removing a lot of the fixer upper woes. We unlock 1% of your commission day one. So you're gonna get paid a lot quicker with Easy Knock than you would in a traditional sale. And you get the rest of your commission on the backside once you actually sell the house on the open market. So you get the same commission, you're just getting uh, part of it a lot quicker. Now, the other thing we can do for agents is position you guys as a builder or a contractor's best friend. Okay, so this is movability. This is really the program that we work with agents 99% of the time. Okay, it's a short-term bridge tool designed to get cash in the client's hand a lot sooner in the process so they can actually start using it. Right. That means leveraging it in the sale of the current house or the purchase of the next. It's completely up to them to figure out how they want to use the money. But the way that, that the program works is easy knock comes in, 
who purchased the house from the client, get them up to 90% of the market value of the home in cash up front. And that's money for them to use however they want. Once they do this, we pay off any liens and loans on the property. So mortgage, HELOC, anything like that all get satisfied. They have a clean slate. Um, Easy Knock is going to cover property taxes, insurance, HOA fees. All the client needs to do is pay rent until the house sells on the open market. So despite the fact that technically Easy Knock has purchased the house from them, they still have complete power to control the sale of the property on the open market. That means they're still going to work with their agent to decide when the house gets listed, what the list price is going to be, and what offer they accept. So they have up to 12 months to sell the house in the open market, which gives them plenty of time to go out and, and find the next property. Um, but uh, yeah, that is the quick overview for movability. So let's talk about some use cases and then we will do an example deal. Okay, so the number one use case that we see for movability, this is what the vast majority of our clients are using the program for, is going to be to get cash to compete in the hot market. So whether that's removing the need for a home sale contingency, uh, you know, putting an all cash offer down on another property, putting a, a larger down payment on another property, or even just an appraisal guarantee. We're seeing a lot of uh, clients use cash in unique ways to separate themselves um, from the other bidders when they're going, you know, going for another property. If you don't have that cash, it can be a real, real issue for you. And so we are seeing a lot of our clients come in and use this cash that we're getting them to compete in the hot market. Now, the other thing that we see a lot of the time is gonna be people utilizing our program as kind of a concierge program. So repairs, renovation, staging, landscaping, anything they need to do to the old house to get it ready for listing and ensure that they're gonna get the most value out of it once it sells in the open market. Now that actually works both ways. It could be that they're buying a fixer upper and they need money and time to put into that property before they wanna move in. So it's completely up to them. But uh, those are uh, you know a few other use cases. Now, the one use case that we've really seen explode over the last year is gonna be new construction. So we are essentially solving the three biggest issues with new construction. The first is gonna be we're getting the client the cash they need to pay the builder the upfront fees and start construction in the first place. The second is we're gonna show the builder recorded sale on the property in the beginning of the deal so that it's not a contingent deal with the builder anymore. And that is a huge bonus here. A lot of builders are not considering contingent deals because there's no need to, right? There's so much demand for new construction right now. So we're showing them that the house is already sold. We're getting the client the money they need to pay the builder the upfront fees. And number three is we're going to satisfy the need for temporary accommodations until that new home is completed. So the client can rent back from Easy Knock for six, seven, eight, nine months, whatever, until the new home is completed or in, so that they can kind of list it around the nine month mark or something. So it sells when the new home is completed. Obviously depends on the timeline there for uh, the new construction, but we're extremely flexible. And that's that's the goal here is to give them the time that they need so that they can we can open up new construction to people who wouldn't be able to consider it otherwise. Okay, so this slide kind of goes over what that contingency situation looks for for someone who doesn't have cash on hand. We really wanna double down on this because that's what we see most of the time with our movability program. So when you're putting a contingent offer down on the next property, you have to really incentivize that, um, that seller to accept your contingent offer for all the all cash offers that they're receiving. What that means is you have to go ridiculously above ask just to get them to consider your offer in the first place. That's a huge issue. We see the, the client essentially getting completely taken advantage of in that situation because best case scenario, they've completely overpaid on the, uh, on the next property. They still had to deal with all the stress involved with the contingency and there's no guarantee that it's going to work out, right? A lot of contingencies are still falling through. So with Easy Knock, the client pays a 3% fee on the market value of the house to do a movability deal. That's the only fee that they're going to pay that they would not be paying in a traditional sale. So the cost of them to do, or the cost for them to do movability is essentially an additional 3% fee. So when you look at, you know, what they're paying in that 3% fee versus what they would be overpaying on the next property with the contingent offer, it makes a lot more sense. 
Yes, you pay a 3% fee with EasyNock, but you have the certainty of knowing you're getting these funds up front and knowing you can leverage them on the next property. You can be a lot more aggressive on your offer and you don't have to go so far above ask, right? Now you have the cash to compete. So that's just one way to look at, at, at the program. The other thing that we're going to talk about here once we get into this example deal is the client benefits fully from any and all appreciation that the home incurs. So if the house ends up selling for above the appraised value, awesome. All that extra cash goes to the client. And so houses, really we're seeing houses appreciate so fast right now that it's covering the cost of the, th of the fee five, six, seven times over. So that, that's another thing to, to, to keep in mind that if it goes into a bidding war and sells for above ask, then they didn't, you know, essentially didn't have to pay a fee at all. Okay, so this is the example deal. Hopefully this clears up some, some questions and gives you guys a good idea of how the deal flows. Once I you know, finish running through this, then obviously I wanna open this up to, uh, to questions. I know this is a ton of information, so I wanna make sure that I'm covering everything you guys are looking for. But let's do this example deal first and then we'll, we'll, we'll you know, do some questions. All right, so for the assumptions, let's assume we're talking about a $300,000 house. The client has a $100,000 mortgage balance, which means they have 200K equity in the house. The max that we can provide upfront for movability is 90%. So 90% of 300,000 is 270. That leaves 10% or 30,000 for the backside once the house actually does sell on the open market. Okay, the left side of the screen is gonna show how all of this plays out. So let's assume, right, there's $300,000 house. We're gonna come in, we purchase the house day one, we get them that 90%, that 270. We're gonna pay off the mortgage balance, so subtract 100,000, pay off the EasyNox 3% uh, fee and the closing costs. The rest is what the client gets in cash up front. So this client would get 158.30 to use however they would like. So repairs, renovations, down payments on the new house, uh, all cash offer, wh wh whatever they need. Now, once we do this, the client is gonna become a market rate tenant in the home until it sells on the open market. Completely on their timeline, they're controlling that sale. Now, there is some flexibility here with how they can pay the rent. So if they are unemployed, they're you know self-employed, like I said earlier, they have income coming in at different times of the month, and they're a little bit worried about having to pay rent each month, not an issue. We are very flexible here. We can defer the rent costs to the backside and essentially just take it out of the proceeds that they're getting once the, the, the home sells on the open market. So think of it as two transactions here. The first transaction when EasyNock purchases the client's house and gives them the upfront cash. The second transaction when the client sells the home on the open market and gets the remaining value. So if they want to defer the rent, we can take it out of the backside. And uh, this is really w one of the ways that, the, that we kind of open the program up to a lot of, uh, of people who are overlooked by, by you know, similar programs. Now, option one is going to show what this looks like if they did not defer any rent, they paid rent each month and the house appreciated a little bit. So great, they get that 10% plus any and all appreciation minus the real, real estate commission once it sells. If they did defer rent, not an issue, they get that 10% plus any and all appreciation minus however many months rent that they deferred minus the real estate commission. So that's how it works for the client. As far as the agent goes, we want to make sure that you guys are getting paid quickly and upfront. We're giving the client upfront cash, we wanna give the agent upfront cash. So the way that this works is when we purchase the house from the client, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna give you 1% of your commission right then and there. On the backside, once the house actually sells on the open market, you get the remaining balance of your commission. So let's say it's a 6% deal, you're making 3% on that, you'd get 1% upfront, 2% when the house sells on the open market. So that's how it works for the agents. All right, so that was a ton of information. I think I saw at least one question pop up in this chat. Feel free to unmute yourself and jump in if you have a question or just put it into the chat and I'll get to it. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, great question. Someone asked how we come up with the market rate for rent. It's gonna be based off local market comps. We utilize an AVM called House Canary that aggregates these, uh, these comps for us. It's run by the large real estate data firm, CoreLogic, and it uh, essentially just gives us a range for what market rent should be. 
we are able to, you know, we have some flexibility to, to go lower in the range, but it really depends on what the client is, is taking up front. If they're maxing out at 90% um, up front, then they're going to be at the higher bound of that, of that rent range. If they're taking less, you know, maybe 80, 70, 60, 50% up front, we have a lot of flexibility to drive that, that rent price uh, down to the lower bound. So that's how we come up with, with market rent. As far as market value goes, we're really heavily relying on the agent to uh, give us that number, right? When you submit the deal, the most important question there is going to be, what do you think the market value of this house is? And so that's the number that we're going to use for estimates, the initial discussions, really to, to you know, put together the, the deal in the first place. Once the client likes what they see, they want to move forward, great. They sign the purchase agreement, we start the closing process, and we'll conduct an appraisal and inspection. The appraised value is really just, or the appraisal is really just to confirm the value that's provided by the agent. That's the number we're able to fund off of, but don't forget that the client is able to list the house for whatever they would like. So say that the appraisal comes back at 300000 and the client is thinking, you know, I, I really think we, we could sell this house for three fifty. dollars that's perfectly fine. We can fund off of that 300,000 number, but they are fully able to go out and sell for 350 and get that extra, you know, 50 grand on the backside. Okay. Someone asked who pays closing costs uh, both times. So the client is going to pay the closing costs on the first transaction when we purchase the house from them. We are going to pay the closing costs on the backside when it sells on the open market. Any other questions on movability, on the buy box, anything that I've covered so far? Great. Well, the next thing I'm going to cover is the timeline. So this should give you guys a good idea of, of uh, you know, the timeline behind the deal and how this all plays out. Um, Initial estimate is going to take 24 to 48 hours on average. Right now, we're experiencing a huge increase in volume, so it's about two to three days. But uh, essentially, how this works is the client or the agent submits the deal to EasyNock. It's non-binding. It doesn't lock you or the client into anything, and it's free to request an estimate and, and submit that deal to EasyNock. So, so feel free to to, to fire away. Right. Uh, the, the other thing to understand here is we're never going to contact the client directly without speaking to the agent first once you submit that deal. So all the information is going to travel through you as a partner. So if you have a client you think this might work for, but you want to see some numbers, great. Submit the deal to us. We'll put an estimate together. You'll jump on a call with Kenny and he'll run you through everything. So that would be, um, you know, the, the initial estimate phase. Client call. Once uh, agent likes what they see, they want to move forward. Great, you'll help us schedule a three-way call with the client so that we can answer any questions. After that, the client signs a purchase agreement and we start the due diligence phase. That takes about one to three weeks on average. It really depends on the market and how quickly the client is making themselves available to get the appraisal and the inspection done. After that, closing takes about 24 to 48 hours for title and wiring of funds. And then they have up to 12 months to sell the house on the open market. So from the time the client signs a purchase agreement to, to the time they get cash in their hand, I would say we're averaging about 18 days. So that is the, the, the timeline for the deal. I think I saw some more questions pop up here. Someone asked what has been the most successful use of this. So I'd say the most successful use is someone who doesn't have cash on hand to, to compete in the market. They're using, they're putting contingent offers out and they're just getting completely overlooked or they're putting, you know, offers with the down payment and uh, it's not enough. They need a bigger down payment or they need an all cash offer. So people who don't have cash to compete, this is a great tool for them. New construction, great use case as well. And uh, also that, that concierge style use case that I talked about. So I, I'd say the vast majority of people we work with are, are kind of distributing the funds between two different use cases. Maybe 70% of the money they're getting goes towards a down payment on the next house. And then the, the remaining 30% goes towards 
fixing up the, the old house and making sure it's ready for listing. But that's the great thing about our program is we don't tell them how they need to use the money. We don't pigeonhole them into one specific use case. There's a lot of different things you can accomplish with the money that we're getting them up front. And look, it's, it's their money. They have built up equity in their house by paying the mortgage on time and you know putting money into the property. We are coming and, and converting that to cash for them so that they can actually start using their money. So that's, uh, I, I would say, the best, most successful use case is people using the cash um, to make themselves a more desirable uh, buyer. Okay, who gets the money if it goes over asking? Sorry if you already answered this question. No worries. If it goes over ask, the client gets every single penny of that. Well, actually, the agent gets some of that as well because your final um, you know, commission is, is based off of that, that final sale price. So if this, the, the house sells for more, your commission is going to be higher and the client gets more cash. So both of you are, are fully incentivized to sell that house for the highest value possible. But we don't take any fees on the backside. The only money we're making is that 3% fee we take off of uh, the appraised value and, and that comes out of the upfront funds. Okay, someone asked, are repair items from inspection negotiated? Great question. So I would say think of it as a common sense uh, inspection. We're really only looking for major fire safety issues to be taken care of. Other than that, the client is, is fully able to decide if they wanna fix the, the, the rest of the stuff on the inspection or if they wanna see if they can get it sold without having to do that. We understand that the market is so hot right now uh, a lot of buyers are turning a blind eye to things that maybe they wouldn't otherwise. And so we don't want to be in a position where we're forcing a client to fix something that they wouldn't have to fix to get it sold. So major fire safety issues. Yes, we're going to want to see that taken care of. We can do a repair holdback out of the upfront funds to make sure that they have the money to, to take care of these repairs and, uh, they get to choose the vendor. We distribute the funds to the vendor and then any money left over gets, uh, uh, obviously goes back to the client. But really, that's all we're looking for is the major fire safety issues. Other than that, more cosmetic stuff like floors, paints, carpets, you know, dishwashers, broken, something like that, that's going to be on the client to decide if they want to fix. The client should understand that if a buyer comes to the table and is, uh, you know, requesting something gets fixed as a condition of the sale, they're going to be responsible for, for fixing that just like they would in any normal sale. Okay, someone asked what happens if the house sells for less than uh, when it is finally sold? Another great question. So it's no different than a traditional sale. If it sells for less, then they're gonna get less money than they expected on the backside. Understand that they're deciding the timeline. So they're deciding when it gets listed, what to list it for and what offer to accept. So if they list it for less or they accept a lower offer, then it's no different than a traditional sale. They're gonna get less money. But um, if it gets sold for less than we provided up front, then uh, we take the hit on that. Um, okay, someone asked, let me see, deal struck on 300,000, the client is paying a 3% fee plus closing, they can sell it at 350 and keep the difference and easy not to pay is closing on the actual close on the sale, is that correct? Just wanna make sure I'm understanding. Yep, so right now, as it stands, if the house uh, sells for more, on the backside, we're still covering the, the, the full closing cost there. But uh, in the future, there may be a situation where we start capping it because we are seeing houses appreciate a ridiculous amount. I mean, I think I, we, we had one house sell and, and uh, you know, the house was listed on the market. In two days, it was sold for about $78,000 above ask. So houses are, are appreciating very quickly. Um, in the future, we may cap the amount that, that we're going to pay on, on closing costs, but that's not a discussion right now. It's not something that, uh, that we, we're seeing on, on the horizon, and it's not something that we're doing right now. But um, just want to kind of manage expectations just in case that does happen in the future. But yeah, I mean, one of the best parts about our program is if the house sells for more, they get full benefit of the appreciation. So I know you guys work with a lot of other, you know, bridge providers and, you know, maybe some iBuyers. The, one of the best ways that, that you can think about this is with an iBuyer, the client is going to take a haircut on the deal, right? That's how an iBuyer works. That's their business model. They have to get the house for cheap so that they can flip it for profit. We are essentially getting the clients the amount 
you know, that 90%, we're essentially getting them up, up, up to that 90%, which is the amount that an I buyer would give them. We're getting them day one with, you know, the promise of the additional funds once they sell the house for, for the appraised value or, or, or higher. So you get the full value for the house and everyone wins here. The client gets all the money. The agent, uh, you know, has a really great free tool that they're able to, to utilize here. And you get paid your full commission with 1% upfront. And we get to do business with you guys. So everyone wins in this transaction. We really wanted to create a program where the agent and the client are protected. So um, that's the basis behind movability. But yeah, so I think someone asked if I can talk about the differences between Easy Knock and Ribbon. So I know you guys work with Ribbon. I would say what, really one of the biggest differences is we don't pigeonhole them into one specific use case, right? Ribbon is going to help the client buy the next house in cash. Great. We can do that. We can also give them money to fix up the old house and get it ready for listing. We can also do new construction deals. We can do pretty much, you know, any situation where the client would need money for that is not buying the next house in cash, we can do. So we kind of bundle a lot of the different programs out there into one, one you know, umbrella here, which is movability. So the other big difference here between us and something like Knock is going to be that we don't have a preferred lender. We don't have a, a in-house mortgage company that we're forcing your client to use on the next property. Um, that is a huge one. So if you know the brokerage still, or if the brokerage has an in-house mortgage company, you guys are fully able to continue driving the the uh, the clients in that direction. Um, but we're never going to you know ask them to use a specific lender on the next property. So they can also go out there and shop around and get the best rate available to them. see any other questions is this program available in western north carolina yeah so we're available in all 50 states uh you know geographically speaking we're extremely flexible the only thing we're going to look at uh you know geographically speaking is going to be population density so we require a minimum of 100 people per square mile by zip code that's really not an issue for almost any you know uh metropolitan or suburban area in, in in the united states essentially what that means is we can't transact on farms and we can't do super super rural areas um let's see when the house is listed on the open market and sells who is listed as the seller you may have already mentioned this so great question. Technically, Easy Knock is the seller at that point uh, because we own the house. So what's going to happen is uh, we sign a tri-party agreement with the agent, the client, and ourself that says, okay, technically Easy Knock owns the house, but the client still has all the power to control the sale. So they get to decide the listing date, listing price, and the offer they accept. It also uh, you know, puts the agent's commission in there, so it's all in one place. But when the client gets an offer that they want to accept, they let Easy Knock know great, we're going to sign a, uh, a agreement with the client that says the client brought us this offer. They want us to accept it for them. Great. Everyone signs. We go out and we sign the actual closing documents. It's technically we're the seller at that point, but just understand that the client really is driving that sale. What are the dollar amount limits you can advance? Another really great uh, question. You guys are hitting me from all sides here. I, I, I love this. So um, as far as the, the max that we can provide up front, I believe right now it's, it's capped at a million dollars. So if it's a $2 million house, then the max we can do is at 50% funding level. There might be a little flexibility there if they need you know, a specific amount of money up front. I would say that we're very flexible. We want to get the deal done and, and uh, I have no problem escalating a deal up the food chain at, at Easy Knock to the leadership team if, if there's something that, that we need to kind of, uh, you know, um, mess with the numbers a little bit. So if you have a deal that uh, they need a little more than a million dollars up front, let us know, submit the deal. We'll, we'll do what we can. Understand that it's free to submit these deals. It's, it's non-binding and we're not contacting the client. So you'll know uh, what that deal looks like before the client sees anything. Any other questions uh, before we jump? Because this is pretty much everything that I have for you guys today. Um, Nick, would you be able to share this presentation with me so that I can send it out to the agents? 
Yeah, definitely. And I'll also share the link to EasyNox full suite of co-brandable marketing materials. I think that might actually be a little more useful because there's, you know, there's example deals in there, product overviews, you know, product one pagers, deal timelines, um, use case decks. There's a ton of different, uh, you know, content that they're able to uh, take a look at. The other great thing about that is they can throw their logo, headshot, contact information on all of those things and, and use it as client facing collateral as well. Awesome. That sounds great. And if you don't mind, so you're going to be the point person or Kenny's going to be the point person? Yeah. So I'm the point person if they have questions about the programs or about, you know, how, how easy that works and that type of stuff. If they are submitting a deal and they have like, you know, deal specific questions, it's going to be Kenny because Kenny is the, is the guy who's going to be, you know, making all the estimates for these deals and, and walking them through that process. So once they submit a deal, then uh, the person they're going to talk to is Kenny. Fabulous. Would you guys mind putting your emails in the chat just so everyone can grab those? Yeah. So mine is on this last one here. Oh, it's pretty perfect. straightforward. <laughs> Let's see. Nick at easyknock.com is my email. And then Kenny just put his in there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. I'm sure we'll have you back again <laughs> to do another presentation soon. Yeah. Um, Great. We're super excited. I would say that North Carolina is one of our hottest markets. We, we have a sister office there because of that. So um, we do a lot of business in the area and, and we're really excited to, to start working together. I, I, you know, in closing, just to remind you guys that this is a free tool for you to utilize. You know, you keep it in your back pocket. If you find a client who could benefit from getting cash up front, let us know. We'll put together an estimate and if it looks good, we'll, we'll move forward with it. So Feel free to reach out with any questions. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to start working together. And just to let you guys know too, just to chime in. Hi, I'm Kenny. Um, I'm actually in Indian land. So my dad lives in Providence Country Club. My mom lives up in Harrisburg. So obviously I'm familiar with all the areas and everything like that as well. So another good thing to have is me actually down here and familiar with the area. So yeah, exactly. Great. All right. Have, have a good weekend, guys. And uh, again, reach out with any questions. Thanks.